Um, okay, so um, just to remind everyone here that uh, we, we want to give uh, Dr. He a chance to explain what he's done uh, in terms of the, the science in particular, but also uh, other, other aspects of, of, of what he's done. So please, can you um, allow him to um, speak without in interruptions? Um, as I said, I have the right to just cancel the, the session if, if there's too much um, noise and interruption. Um, and I just wanted to state a couple of other things. So first of all, that we, we didn't know um, the story that was going to break over the last couple of days uh, when um, he accept, accepted the invitation to come and speak to us. Um, so we didn't know this story beforehand. Um, uh, in fact, he had sent me uh, the slides he was going to show in this session, and it did not include any of the, any of the work that he's now going to talk about. It was sort of preclinical data, but not, nothing uh, involving human, embryo, human embryos uh, that were implanted. Um, and I should also state that um, you know, we're in a venue. Uh, we have very generous hosts, Hong Kong, Hong Kong University, University of Hong Kong. And our hosts have also, they have a, um, a strong tradition of allowing free speech. And so we are complying with that, uh, that tradition of, of free speech. So anyway, I would like to, um, if you can hear me, ask Jiang uh, uh, Kuei uh, to come to the stage and, and present his, uh, his, his work. I don't know where he is, so hence the... Uh... Okay, thank you. <clears throat> uh, first, I must apologize that these results leaked unexpectedly, taking away from the community of the full data being presented immediately in a scientific venue. And through a peer review process engaged before this conference. This study. Okay, so this study has been submitted to, to a scientific journal for review. I also thank the Associated Press, who we engaged months before the change birth, out of a commitment to the accurate reporting the study's outcome from many points of view. I also thank my university, although they are unwell of the study conduct. So, Winnie Herbert, I should also thank you for your statements now and your wisdom that shared with me, as well as the community for discuss discussing this data and providing this forum. I'll give an overview of our data focused on human and uh, monkeys. Despite wonderful progress in HIV therapy and access to this therapy, new infections 
remains three times higher than the UN AIDS 2020 target. So HIV remains a top 10 cause of death in several countries, in particular developing country. For uninfected children born by an HIV positive mother, who know make up a large percentage of births in area of Southern Africa. The risk of being infected by HIV in the first few months of life is many, many times higher than other babies. This is a, a serious unmet need. As an infection, severity is often made even worse by discrimination. So a copy of a natural protective ID against HIV infection is carried by as much as about 10% of the population in several European countries. This ID lead to the first functional cure of HIV and decades of clinical trials, making this natural smooth deletion in CCR5 gene one of most studied variations. And the CCR5 gene are one of the most understood genes. We first explored the impact of CCR5 gene lockout in mice to investigate the multi generation effect. Editing was efficient as expected. We established a, a third generation CCR5 long mice, which we confirmed by Western blood and uh, flow cytometry. Tissue pathology was normal in heart, liver, lung, and stomach. So two common behavior assessment showed no difference. We then assess whether this set should get RNA against the human CCR5 gene could be designed. So we assessed seven. I highlighted one that caught at exactly the start of data 32 mutation. It has an MIT specificity score above threshold, predictive of having no target activity. A few previous publication has assessed the same or similar GetRNA in multi-cell type including non-variable embryos. <clears throat> SG4 induced the most efficient editing activity in a cell line and 3PN human embryos. Since this target site is conserved in the monkey genome, we could use the monkey as an animal model to assess the SGRN further. We found injecting the cas closer to fertilization promoted the most efficient editing efficiency, consistent with the Cas9 required 10 to find the target loss and degradation over 10. The rate of fertile eggs forming process was not affected by exposure to Cas9, which we observed across experiments. So sequencing of the process quadrant confirmed earlier Cas9 injection also reduced the mosaicism. To look more closely on the mosaicism, we also sequenced every individual cell in several embryos. Editing appeared to occur at the one, two, three cell stage. On the assumption that Cas9 degrades quickly and requires time to find the, the right target, 
we explored a strategy to reduce the mosaicism by delivering a second injection of castellan to an embryo at a two cell stage. The development of eggs to the blood cells was not impaired. We expanded sample size, which confirmed this previous observation. We still observed the variation across parents and the cycles. We then looked to see if this protocol could translate to human embryos. We found, as others have reported, the Kessler protein was the most efficient delivery format. Lowering the dose compared to the monkey embryo also improved the efficacy. Upon the advice I received after presenting early results at the February 2017, the UC Berkeley Genome Editing Workshop, we edited non-viable embryos and established the two embryonic stem cell, cell name. So both are bioanalytic lockout and the karyotypes are normal. Embryonic stem cell marker expression was normal by staining and the flow cytometry. This embryonic stem cell also found all three germ lines during the 14-day EV experiment, which is a marker of safety. Another serious safety concern is off-target. Embryo editing target a single or few cell stage of life. Any off-target would pose very serious consequence and extend potential through the whole body. In adult gene therapy, off-target are expected but a less healthy problem. We assessed off-target initially by single-cell whole genome sequencing of embryo prior to the implementation. We used the isothermal MDA amplification method to minimize the post-selective post rate and for unbiased coverage. The Milton-Poff lab used the same approach. We take a step further by sequencing the parent genome to detect off-target risk sites that exist only for each parent and a particular embryo, but not in the reference genome. We create a, a pool of off-target risk sites by first collecting all any sites mentioned in previous publication. We add that genome sites for an unbiased assessment of a potential cleavage site. And, and in silico prediction, such as the MIT CRISPR design, uh, both the original and the 2018 updated version. Finally, we import the parent genome, which allow facing to improve sensitivity and uh, detect the larval risk sites unique to each embryo, which may emerge from inherited Intel or SMPs. So all this loci found a personalized pool on the order of 10,000 spots per embryo. We use whole genome sequencing to assess for the spot and validate any findings by single sequencing. I will review genome sequencing data with the data on the new and nana as focus and end. Of the potential cleavage sites identified by the genome-wide unbiased digenome assay, 
known was observed in the whole genome sequencing data. And no activity was observed at the risk sites identified uh, by the 2018 version of MIT technology, MIT CRISPR design software and the original version. We explore off-target in the HESC cell name generated from added embryo. Although we didn't have access to embryo with the, the parental donor's genome, we identified one potential off-target. This off-target is in the intergenic region, although we cannot uh, confirm whether this is an uh, inheritance or it's due to editing. So here you can see the editing efficiency across 19 viable embryos from volunteers. So we performed PGD whole genome sequencing across the embryo and didn't uh, identify the off-target sites. So in one embryo, we identified a uh, six KV deletion at the on-target sites. It did not affect any gene but the CCR5. The CCR5 genes distance from other genes protect against the risk of large deletion. We detect the large deletion by us assessing for the chimerical reads and the visual confirmation. Now I will focus on the Lulu and the Lala's genomic data. We sequenced the genome of both parents to confirm the target size conservation and to support off-target detection. The mother was HIV elective. The father positive with undetectable viral load. So the ICSI and the sperm washing was used to prevent transmission. At day five, so we have few cells were sampled from site for PGD. We follow on these results during the pregnancy by self-free DNA after the mother declined an amino synthesis. So Lulu and Nala were born normal and healthy with upcon score eight and nine. After birth, we sequenced several different tissues. So in this mark and Greece first AVF cycle, pre-implementation genetic diagnosis found two blood sites were edited. One was a bionic fringe shift lockout, which should shorten the CCRF protein, similar to the natural protective variation. Another has an infree deletion in one and E. The deletion expects to destabilize local protein structure in the nearby HIV binding sites. The parents were informed of implementation of this in related to HIV infection and remind them the option to leave the trial uh, without implementation or to choose the wild type embryos. The couple elected to implement this embryo to start a, a two embryo pregnancy. In addition to the single data, we also report to the volunteer whole genome sequencing data. The reads cover that more than 80% of the genome. The whole genome sequencing identified one off-target in the MAC-based intergenic region 
far from other gyms, with no no coding RNA and transcription factor binding sites. The volunteers were informed of the risk of posed by the existent one potential off-target, and they decided to implant. <clears throat> After the mother declined aminosynthesis, serial cell-free DNA a blood test didn't observe the intergenic off-target from PGD. So another cell-free DNA test found no larval cancer gene mutation. After birth, the deep sequencing of the cold blood which is primarily the baby's blood, confirmed editing pattern observed during PGD and CFRI DNA. Sangal sequencing also confirmed this observation. After birth, both my seek deep sequencing and Sangal sequencing did not detect intergenic off-target observed during the PGD. This suggests it was an artifact of a single cell amplification or a mosaic of target that happened to occur in the few twelve plus of the cell sampled for PGD. For whole genome sequencing, we did a 100x cold blood and 30x on the placental. No off-target were observed genome-wide. Neither were large deletion. We will continue to assess the effect of editing in the twins, including testing a blood sample for susceptibility to HIV infection at the P3 biosafety lab. We also further investigate the off-target effects and the mosaicisms across multiple tissues. And the plan to monitor the twins healthy for the next 18 years with the hope that they will consent as adult for continued monitoring and support. Thank you. So...